Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Oh, hello, and welcome to Master Delve Theatre. I am Citanium doing some sort of British accent. It's that time of year where the airwaves are flooded with holiday specials about frosty snowmen, red-nosed reindeer, elves on shelves, and Kurt Russell. But this year on Delve, we take things one step further, with an entire Christmas adventure to save the man in red himself, Kurt Russell. So sorry Santa Claus. Set in three acts, we join a turtle monk, an elvish rogue, and a rainbow unicorn on a mission of utmost importance. Left in the hands of our featured storyteller James Braffin and his system Roll to Dodge, let us join the party as they set off on an adventure of epic proportions. And while I am using this voice, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus, and he owes me money. Enjoy. Thank you for joining us uh, for a, a wonderful reason for the meason season. Reason for the meason season. Uh, and uh, a Delve live play, which we just usually never do. I am uh, Nathan Ainsworth, and uh, my co-host uh, is not here for the evening, Alex. Um, he uh, is usually working nights, so he didn't want to uh, risk not being able to be here. Uh, also, he hates fun. And also, uh, he, uh, he knows what it's like to play with me. And if you're wondering what that means, well, stay tuned. Uh, <laughs> He's really not going to like playing with me then when no, we finally end up doing it. Probably <clears throat> not. We'll find out. It is at this point, though, because I am actually going to stop talking for a moment. I want to introduce everybody. Uh, he has actually been on the show here to talk a little bit about uh, the system that he has is James Braffin, uh, who uh, is actually going to be doing the GMing duties tonight, Master of Ceremonies, whatever you'd like to be called. What do you want to be called, anyway? You, um, in the rules, I usually go by storyteller, but GM, DM, it's all fine. By okay. me. It's all interchangeable. Yeah. The, the person talking, basically. Hi. Hi. Good evening. <laughs> uh, James, <laughs> James, why don't you tell us a little bit about Roll to Dodge, because that's a system okay. we're going to be using. So Roll the Dodge is a custom system that I'm currently developing. It is a narrative-based system with um, mechanical sub-themes within it. Basically, how it works is it's all about the story, but unlike some story-based systems that we um, you see today, like Fate, um, Faith, um, rather than having rather abstract storytelling mechanics, um, they're a lot more concrete. Um, it uses things like traits, dice rolling, regular dice rolling, I mean, um, and D20s. Um, and it's based on what I call a sliding scale D20, which is basically a D20, which is also a sliding scale. It's kind of self-explanatory. The um, system functions, basically you roll a D20, the higher you roll, the better you get, and certain attributes you have will add or subtract from your roll. For example, if you are like, your arm is broken, you might get a minus two to um, physical um, melee attacks. But if you're really fast, you might get a plus two bonus to jumping over things or running away from danger or something along those lines. And uh, you know what? I am going to say that everything you said is factually correct because you made the system. And uh, it's theoretically factually correct. Theoretically I factually correct. It's if something's imbalanced, it's probably my fault. And but you know what? We find out by playing. So <laughs> that's always the fun part. But before we do that, um I want to, to throw it over and have the other players introduce themselves and their characters. DC, you always come in to help me out with these things, especially when Alex is just being uh a, a Grinch. So thank you for being here. Uh just can you tell everybody who you are and uh, what character you're playing. Hi. I'm a uh, go by DC Lasser on most all the things that's d c l a s a i r and uh today uh, I am playing a turtle monk <gasps> character in this system and uh I really appreciate you having me on again yeah it's it's great it's the uh is the turtle 
monk uh, a specific kind of monk? I have the uh, way of the drunken master. Oh, that's fun. It, when uh, when Dom and the, the rest of my crew hears this, I'm playing a uh, giant glowing turtle monk, that, but he's way of shadow. But uh, I had this whole thing. His name is Rembrandt. And uh, he has this whole thing. Since he glows green and he like he's seven feet tall and a thousand pounds, he's like the least stealthy thing imaginable. Uh, but he he really insists that he can be a shadow monk. So basically, he's a teenage mutant ninja turtle. Okay, in case no one got that reference. Anyway, but it's gonna be fun. What's uh, DC? What's your character's um, name? Loth. L U T H or Luth. Luth. Oh, sorry. Luth. L U T H. Luth. Yeah. Okay. Writing it down. In my notes, Luth with like umlauts over the U, so no. it's Luth. No, okay. You can't just call him Lou. Okay, be fine. okay, Lou. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. Um, and uh, and also joining us uh, for the first time on the show, and really for pretty new to Discord, I guess. Uh, but we're really happy to have her. Uh, Book Butterfly. Uh, Book Butterfly. Thank you for coming uh, onto the show. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, the character you're playing? I just started doing roleplay. This is actually my first time doing anything like this. Excellent. I don't know what to do for, to explain my character. She's um, half elven. Uh, she's a rogue, if I'm correct, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So half elven, rogue. Uh, and, and what is her name? Aurora Astari. Aurora, Aurora Astari. Excellent. No one needs to know who I'm playing. Um, okay, fine. Um, oh, we all know who you're playing. We all, we all know. I should, I should probably give a little bit of backstory because I know there's a few people out there. There's like two people that care. DC's one of them and, and then like David and a few other people, but just so everyone's wondering about canon. So I'm going to be playing Snowball the Rainbow Unicorn. Now, the way I imagine this is, uh, because eventually we are going to talk about Hoof and Horn Detective Agency and all that down the line. He, uh, it, wait, it's, what? Oh, the Hoof and Horn Detective Agency. Hoof and Agent? Horn Detective Agency? Yeah, the Hoof and Horn Detective Agency. Oh, I, you haven't gotten to that episode, have you? Oh, no, Ooh. I am still in the first 100. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, when I start talking about that, I start talking about his, uh, journey to become a detective and starting basically a monster detective agency, oh. which, which eventually we'll, we'll probably do. Uh, the way I envisioned it here, though, is in this particular thing, you can imagine a very young, very impressionable Snowball who has just finished reading his very first Sherlock Hooves novel, A Study in Stirrups, and he falls asleep dreaming <sighs> about being a detective and almost like <laughs> Astral projects this version of himself into being. So you can imagine at the end of all of this, uh, it, it, like this version of the character like poofs out of existence and he wakes up and goes, it was all a dream. Uh, so, <laughs> so that might explain why he's so powerful right now. Um, but uh, I think I broke James. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Oh, um, you're fine. So, uh, so yeah, and I'm, I'm Snowball. Uh, and, um, I think that's pretty much everything people need to know. So, uh, James, I am going to turn it right over to you. Please transport me to a world of imagination. So our story begin actually begins a few weeks ago when the uh, president of the United States received some disturbing news from his um, agents. He discovered that the CIA, the FBI, and um, NASA had all lost contact with Santa Claus, as well as the rest of the world. And so because of this and the real imminent danger of Christmas being ruined for everybody, because, you know, it's not Christmas if you don't have Santa Claus, the president made a few calls, did his um, president things in his president way, and he called upon um, an organization known as Inside, the internationally known society of individuals of dubious existence. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you might have to put that in the chat so I can reference it because I can't write that fast. 
<laughs> if, you, if you happen to be an interactive, you could just write that down because that's yep. so so everyone can see that. Because it took me literally a whole day to figure out how to build that acronym. <laughs> <laughs> I love your creative use of known. <laughs> that's that's great. That is terrific. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Sorry to derail. Please keep um, going. <laughs> Because they owe a few favors to the United States for, you know, not totally destroying them the last few years, they agreed to provide assistance. Because, you know, Claus is one of the members of Inside. At this moment, they have sent three of their agents out to the North Pole to um, discover what exactly has caused this lack of communication. Because they fear that someone could be trying to destroy Christmas, and that would just be bad. So our story begins in a small jet plane. You all are um, seated uh, around a table, except for um, Nathan, who is Snowball, excuse me, who is obviously standing because he's a horse and he can't sit. It's uh, pretty obvious it's a holograph table to a hol- excuse me, a hologram table to you that um, is bleeping um, and whirring and making all sorts of annoying noises. You're traveling at a high speed north, to a location that has been undisclosed by uh, the press in order to catch up with Santa Claus's um, mode of transportation. And you're welcome to do as you please. The hollow table is, is not on at the moment, or it is on? It is, it's not on, but it is making noises at you as though it wants you to turn it on. Um, Should uh, someone hit a button? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh Luth, I love your enthusiasm. Please. If if you would care to, please, by all means, push said right. button. I don't know how these work. I hit a random button in front of me that's the most blinky. Something um, flickers on the screen, and suddenly there's a blue three-dimensional figure standing in front of you. He has puppy, puffy pants, and he's um, tossing a grenade in his right hand. God damn it. <laughs> 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 well, hey there. Hey, I wonder what your name is, sir. Well, it's good to see you, agents, um, the man says. As you know, I'm Jeremiah. Well, it's good to be seen. <gasps> Jeremiah, do you, have a, do you have a surname that I could refer to you by? <laughs> you can refer to me as Mr. Puffy. Oh, wait, what is his last name? Jeremiah Puffy. Mr. Pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Mr. Mr. Jeremiah. <laughs> Mr. Josiah P. Pants, I remember you very vividly from the Academy. Well, as you know, after I faked my death and um, became the leader of Inside a few years ago, I have been looking out for troubles like these. I, I, I uh, excuse me, sorry. I, I don't know if the hollow thing really reflects the puffiness of your pants. Limited technology. <laughs> yeah. Level of technology. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Thank you, Agent, for your um, insightful but totally useless information. That's <laughs> <laughs> it... what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jolly good, Lee. Jolly good. At any rate, I am here to finalize your mission and go over the um, entrance plan, entrance and exit plan one more time, if that's all right with you. That would be ever so lovely. I, uh, I, I do not know about my compatriots, but I am uh, all horns. So, as you know, um, you are traveling over the Arctic at um, very high speed. This is because dur- during our recent preliminary scanning, we discovered that Santa's submersile has been um, heavily fortified and mostly entrances within it have been sealed off. Now, what we're going to have you do is we're going to have you parachute onto the um, top deck um, while it remains um, not submerged and have you enter within the boiler room, which is um, we were surprised to find was accidentally left unfortified. However, the defenses on this device are very advanced and we're not sure what to expect, but we believe that you can expect extreme resistance from the forces that have boarded the vessel. Oh, extreme, you say? Extreme. Extreme. Once you enter, I'm I'm sorry. Did I interrupt you? Oh, oh no! I I was just I was so actively listening that my horn started to vibrate. That must have been what you heard. I see. It's a problem. Once I'm you... going to the doctor later. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's good. That's mm-hmm. good. Yes, we want all of our agents in top condition. <laughs> At any rate, 
once you enter the boiler room, you will have to make your way to the front of the ship, the bridge, where we have reason to believe that Santa Claus is being held captive. Once you do this and defeat whatever monstrosity is within the walls of this submarine, you will be able to release him and save Christmas for the entire world. Does that sound suitable? Sa saving Christmas for the entire world? Oh, well, that does seem like something in my milieu. How about, uh, how about, uh, the both of you, Aurora and Luth? That's, uh, quite a task you got there. But it's, you know, smash some faces. I can do it. <laughs> Let's go save Christmas. All right. Very well. We'll be arriving at your destination in any second. I'd advise you put on the parachutes that I left conveniently behind, um, the table and be prepared for your pilot to drop you. Now, be warned. It's cold out there. And uh, if you fall in the water, I hold no responsibility for your actions. Good question. Are, uh, are these normal parachutes? They're rip-off. Or can they hold my weight? Uh, they're special design, um, spider silk from the mines of Moria. You'll find that they'll hold your weight just fine. All right. A another follow-up question about these parachutes, if I may. Are they particularly tear-proof? Because my horn has a tendency to rip things open very easily. They, since they are made of spider silk, they are um, quite strong and tear-proof. However, when you land, you'll need to rip them off your packs, and um, so you might be able to enter into the boiler room. This will be easily done there. Um, they have a tear-off pad. Uh, uh, also, another follow-up question. Sorry, but I am a detective. Uh, if, uh, if I am technically parachuting, does that make me a pegasi? <laughs> no. Drat. <laughs> oh. Well, I you know, I have we, can, we can dream. I can be... About How big are they? They're about three meters across, give or take. I don't know. I'm not in charge of designing them. That's that's the people below me. Are you standing on people right now? <laughs> are are they in the pants? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is why you're called Puffy Pants. Of course, I forgot about that. <laughs> There's a long disapproved silence from Mr. Pants. <laughs> the law grows deeper. And he he kind of glares at you for a second. I got a glare. <laughs> Good one, Luke. Maybe you should put on your parachutes and, uh, you know, go save Christmas. <laughs> no, we should talk more about your pants. I think that would be... No, let's get put on the parachutes. <laughs> well, okay, then. Good luck, agents. And he signs off. And the um, hollow table shuts down. Well, now the game is afoot. Or a hoof, as I like <laughs> to call it. Because I have hooves. All right, parachute time. Yeah. So I assume you all put on your parachutes? Yep. Yeah. And in, right. uh, in Snowball's head, um, uh, Thunderstruck is playing right now. Just, <laughs> just for reference point. Okay, totally out of character and off topic. You guys really need um, a music playing applet thing that goes on the side here. Oh, yeah. Then we could actually play Thunderstruck. It'd That's be really awesome. true. You know, missed opportunity. I probably don't have the money for the rights. You've you've imagined it in your head. That's the point. <laughs> right now, right now you're playing that uh that uh scene from Deadpool two, and we're all there. Good, transported, perfect. X Force, Inside Force. The cargo ramp opens up, and you can um see where um there's a small metal submarine or what looks to be small but because you're really high up you can assume it's pretty large there's a, a submarine um going chugging along in the icy waters of the arctic you can see there's little things flying around it like aeroplanes or something like that you're not exactly sure what but you can assume that they fly because you know they're flying um it opens up and you now have the ability to go outside and head toward the summer summer cell. i am up for anything I'm also now realizing that since you don't have hands, this whole parachute thing might get a little tricky. Oh, he'll figure it out. <laughs> That's like his special skill. It's, uh, it's, this, it's this thing where uh, Snowball, just, j Snowball just figures it out. That's like his special... Pa I have to check his character sheet, but I'm pretty sure that's something he can just do. Okay, that'll be fine. As long as we don't have um, flat unicorn when we hit the broad bottom. Strawberry jelly is not exactly on my... The list of things that I plan for in this encounter. I have, um, I have, uh, I have like area manipulation. I could just say I can manipulate a, a bag. <laughs> I can manipulate the parachute onto my back. 
Uh, sounds like a plan to me. So are you guys going out of the um, plane? Uh, yep. I'm doing it in slow motion. So everything slows down for a minute as Snowball jumps out of the plane and is followed by Aurora and Luf. And then it goes back to regular speed because if we do this whole thing in slow motion, we'll be up till the crack of dawn tomorrow morning. As you dive toward the submarine, you hear a, a whirring sound above you. And as you look up, you see little planes um, flying above you. And they don't look friendly and they look a lot like penguins. Oh, oh no, it's the Royal Penguin Air Force. We must have, have, <laughs> have we pulled our parachutes open at this point? Or you have still... not. You're still okay. a great distance from the Earth. <laughs> okay, so our parachutes aren't open. We're still in free fall getting away from the plane. Okay. Yes. I pull my arms to my sides and, like, dive down to get gra- to get to the submarine faster. Uh, would you roll a 2d6, please? Uh, 10. 10. All right. Two of the planes split off from the rest of the group and charge you and start firing at you. Um, but they go over you and miss, um, and you can kind of hear the bullets bouncing off of your parachute a little bit. They're obviously not friendly. The other two, um, planes, they remain in the air, and from them drop more penguins, more skydiving penguins. They, um, fold their wings to their sides, and they come in to, um, charge you guys. Well, I would have liked to have pulled my parachute open at the time, but I will grab the little hook thing, or at least be able to pull it, and I will... Uh, pull into my shell and just fall and kind of peep out so I have some idea when I need to fully open it. Okay. What about you, Nathan? Is there anything you'd like to do this time? Uh, yeah. Uh, Snowball is going to look disapprovingly at the penguins and try to stare at them, like, with a re- with the regal bearing that he brings to the to the table, like, you shall not pass, in that sort of vein. Okay. See if he can deter the the penguins. Why don't you roll D twenty for me? Oh, a D twenty, my favorite D. Oh, that's a two. <laughs> um, the penguins <laughs> don't look. They, they they don't look um bothered at all. Can't you see that I'm staring extra intensely at you? Nope. Damn. They they, they may be wearing um goggles um and not be able to see you. Oh, I should have noticed that before. All right. Well, I'm going to do my best uh, Pegasus impression, and uh, and just look so graceful as I float downward. Uh, but I'm not going to pull my parachute just yet. Butterfly, is there something else you'd like to do, real quick? I don't think so. Okay. The um, fighters and the penguins that have come out of the fighters, they are now coming at you at a pretty high speed, and the fighters. Um, they sort of are in this formation, and um, they attack um, DC. So what you're going to do is roll 46. Mm-hmm. Um, which any, any uh, bonus for being in my shell? Uh, you or will get a the... you will get a bonus since you're on um, defense. Okay, so 46. Yeah, 46, and I think the bonus you get is okay. I think you get a plus four bonus. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. You um your shield um your um shell deflects the attacks. All of them. You take no damage. Um as for the penguins, they are they're diving and then they um spread out and they start chucking bombs at um Snowball and Aurora. Aurora. If you guys would roll two D twenties and tell me the result for each one. Oh, uh. That's a 3 and a 15. Oh, and 11. Most of the ex- um, explosives um, detonate harmlessly around you. However, Snowball gets a nice graze on um, one shoulder and takes one-fifth of a wound. Oh, no! I guess I should probably explain what wounds are. Um, okay. So wounds are this system's version of hit points. Think of them as sort of a cross between HP and um, I believe there's a few systems that instead of doing physical damage, they do abstract damage like um, Fate again, where damage is um, penalties to your score. It's sort of a cross between those two um, concepts. For those of you <laughs> who don't understand, um, those of you at home who don't understand what I'm talking about. How many wounds can I uh, take before it gets like bad? I mentioned it at some point. You 200. have 200. Oh, I have you eight. Have, 
You have eight. And okay. DC, you have nine. I think, Butterfly, you have eight as well. So I have a fifth of a wound. Not a full Yeah, one. you've taken a fifth of a wound, not a full one. Oh. Yeah, I, I measured wounds in fifths. These, uh, that these, way you just don't die so quickly. Yeah, these penguins are just mean. Yeah, they are, no. they are, they're not nice penguins. <laughs> no, the, I saw a documentary that made them look much friendlier than they are. Man, that Happy Feet movie is just a liar, let me tell you. Oh, yeah, that one. That documentary. That's what I meant. <laughs> That's the documentary I was thinking of. <laughs> so, there, yeah, good. I'll, I'll brush it off and okay. I'll, I'll persevere. Stiff upper lip and all that. So, I believe it's y'all's turn to act, if I'm correct. How Ooh. close to the ground are we? You have five rounds remaining before you hit that submarine. Ooh. Five rounds of actions. Okay. If you can survive till you hit the submarine, you're all okay. If you don't survive until you hit the submarine... That was well, a short game. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it will be. It will be. <laughs> it will be GG, everybody, but really not. So much for Christmas. Yeah, well, we failed. Sorry, Santa. Uh, is there a, a turn order that we go in? In um, this system, and personal preference, I prefer if you guys all just, just go in whatever just order, go. and then the enemies will act, and then you guys will go, and the enemies will act. Gotcha. It's faster that way, especially since there's a lot of uh, post checks. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Does it uh, appear as if these penguins are going to try to attack us again with bombs? Yes. Perfect. They definitely have plenty of bombs. All right. So uh, Snowball is going to ready his horn to try and bat the bombs away if they try to attack him with said bombs. All right. Can work with that. Cool. You won't make an action. Um, basically, gotcha. you'll just get a bonus on your next defense check. Gotcha. Everyone else? What are we thinking? Uh, if they come at me, I could attempt to uh, deflect the missile. Okay, that we can do. Or deflect the bomb in this yeah. case, but it's called deflect yeah. missiles. Yeah. So how that's going to work is you're just going to, if you block it, you'll just take no damage. If you succeed at defending yourself by seven or more, you will um, be able to use the other half of that ability. Okay. And what about you, Butterfly? What are you thinking for an action here? I'm trying to figure out what to do. Okay. This. Well, the great advantage of Roll the Dodge is you can do literally anything. If you decide that suddenly your character feels the need to vomit all over the place, it can, they can do that. If you'd much rather have them just um, dive for the um, somersault, which I would recommend um, over vomiting, personally, I think that's more productive use of your action. You can Those do that too. Those are your too. two choices, I suppose. Not necessarily, <laughs> but I'm just saying. You could do anything. You have two choices right now. Vomit or dive. What do you want? To do? Out, of, out of those two, I would prefer diving. But... So basically, you all will get defense actions on the next attack. We'll start with the planes again, who are going to um, come in and dive bomb and start firing at Aurora. So if you'd roll 46... I did forget to mention, rolling 46, if you make a 6, it counts as a 7. If you make a 1, it's a negative 1. That's important, probably important information for you guys to know. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I have 15. Ooh, I almost feel bad doing this because it's a lot of damage. You try to dodge the bullets, but you are pretty unsuccessful. They catch you in the arm pretty bad. And you take, you got a 15, you said? You're going to take a whole wound of damage. And in addition, it's your dom hand, dominant hand, so um, you'll take, you'll now start taking a minus one penalty to attacking with your dominant hand. Are you guys writing down the wounds you take, or do you guys need me to do it? Okay, good. Um, okay. Anyone else need me to write down the wounds they take? Uh, just the emotional ones. No, I have it written down here. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you can, you, you can feel free to. <laughs> I won't stop you. As, as long as you guys are keeping track of it, it's fine. Sure. And you're yeah, honest, and if you die, you actually die. Okay. You die in the game, you die for real. You can take the blue pill. <laughs> no. Or you can take the red pill. No. Which, which one ends the two sequels? <laughs> <laughs> which one reverts it back to the single movie and not the trilogy? So, DC and Nathan, you guys. Good job. Both. See, I was telling you I was going to get it right. Yeah. You guys see the penguins that are not in the planes coming at you, they've got um, more bombs at the ready and they start hurling them. So another two D20s and the results of both. 
Oh, I'm rolling two d20s this time? Yes. I need a new d20. Um, I got an eight and a three. And you got DC? So, um, I got a one and a twelve. Okay, so that's not good. A one, obviously, is a critical failure. So, the bombs come at you. Oh, wait. Oh, no, you still have a critical failure, so the bonus doesn't apply. So, <laughs> um, the bombs come in fast and thick, and you guys can both feel uh, like the rain of shrap- shrap- sharp panel. I hope I'm saying that right. I apologize shrapnel. for all of you. Shrapnel. shrapnel. I knew I butchered it. Yeah, yeah, um, I apologize to all of those listening. If your ears are bleeding, I'm sorry. When your ears bleed in the game, it bleeds in real life. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good for DC because one of those bombs gets right up in his shell and explodes. And now his head is ringing and he's having a hard time focusing. And he takes a whole wound, um, wound and a half. So that'd be um, one wound and three-fifths of a wound. Snowball ends Ooh. up taking another three-fifths of a wound. Another three-fifths? Oh my god. That's a whole four-fifths of a wound now. They go pretty fast, don't they? Yeah. It's it... like those deals at auto auto um, dealers. Oh. They, just, they just vanish, man. Yeah, I know. It's a limited time offer. Right now, Snowball's thinking, I should have never listened to this Puffy Pants man. It's like Halloween candy. It disappears before you're ready for it, too. Um, oh, not if it's candy corn. <laughs> oh, it last that is ever. true. Yeah. Candy corn. I'm never going to understand that stuff. I, You know what? My character should have just been a giant candy corn. It will never die. <laughs> <laughs> Next character. Apparently I'm going to have to run another one of these. Okay then. Just just for the giant candy corn. So with that, I believe it's y'all's turn. You have four turns until you hit the ground. <sighs> oh boy. Hopefully you roll better this time. <laughs> yeah. Not that I'm saying anything or anything there. Oh, but, no, uh, no, I get it. If you need to, you feel free to yell at your dice. Um, I understand that. <laughs> Does that help? I, I don't know. I, I find that if you speak nicely to them, oh, gotcha. they, they, they roll better. But if you yell at them, you definitely feel better about it afterwards. Yeah. Tell you what, um, mm. Butterfly, do you want to make the first action this round? Sure. I believe you have, you could attack, you could attempt some acrobatics some other different um, actions against the um, penguins in order to be less easy to hit. You can throw acid at them. That's an option? Wow. That's an option. Oh, jeez. That's a good um, one. There's something about rogues in Pathfinder. They're so amazing. That's the system sure character is built in, by the oh, way, is Pathfinder. Okay. It's the only system I know, so <laughs> it was about all we had to work from. Fair enough. Um, That's good. We have, we have D&D, Pathfinder, and Open Legend. We got the whole cornucopia of systems that we're pulling from, mm. so that's fun. Okay, I'll do the acid thing. You're gonna throw acid at them? The penguins or the, um, planes? The penguins are closer, yes? Yes, for sure. I'll go with the penguins. Okay. So if you'd roll 1d20 for the entire attack, what did you get? Ooh. So one penguin explodes into a pile of feathers. <laughs> okay, that scene was not in March of the Penguins. <laughs> <laughs> I, really, I feel there, cheated. I want my awesome. money back. <laughs> there is now a little puddle of penguin and acid, sort of just like um, falling through the sky, and, and it's kind. Of, it, yeah, yeah, it's kind of gross. Um, little flecks of red and black in there. Mm-mm-mm. Um, so try um, narrating that, Richard Attenborough. Red and black flecks fall to the bottom <laughs> as, a, as a penguin explodes with acid. Let's observe now. That's great. Go to the videotape. So two of the other penguins um, get hit with little flecks of acid. So they take some damage. Oh, what is it doing? What is what do I, the, the penguin? I'm, I'm using a spreadsheet to keep track of wounds oh. and it being stupid. Oh, I got you. What do you guys want to do? <laughs> I don't know. Well... Having just absorbed that hit, I'm just going back into the shell. And, uh. <laughs> but weren't you already in the shell? Well, I had to get out to use, um, deflect missiles thing. Oh, I, I did not understand that. Okay. I figured you were deflecting them off the back of your shell. Oh, okay. I see. Ah. No, this is to actually catch the missile. Ah. And so, yeah. Okay. I see. So, so, not liking getting hit, I'm just going back in the shell. And continue to fall, because that sucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing like a bomb in your face to ruin your day. Yeah. <laughs> it's like well, stuck me in dog poop. 
it's just hazard pay. Yeah. You gotta remember to log that. Um, I mean, at least the benefits are good. Um, yeah, I've heard, I've heard good things. Inside pays very well. I, uh, oh, what is Snowball gonna do? Um, uh, Snowball is, uh, going to try a completely different tactic. And, uh, he is, uh, going to try and slow his descent so that he can try ramming, uh, into these penguins with his horn and use okay. his horn attack. Okay, he's gonna use his horn attack against, yes. um, one of the penguins, not one of the fighters, if I'm correct. Yeah, he's gonna go right for the penguins because he didn't like that documentary. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he, okay. this is revenge. Yeah. If you make a D20. He saw March of the Penguins in April, and it was false advertising. Uh, D20. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, please. Let's ooh. See. 19. Ooh. Let's see. I should have something in my notes somewhere. Oh, goodness. I guess I should mention this while I'm making the roll to see if this penguin survives. Um, nope, it's dead. Okay. Um, you now have a penguin stuck on your horn. Um, <laughs> and it, 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 it's sort of running its blood all into your eyes. Oh, great. Well, that kind of worked. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, this is not um, what I expected when I went into the detective field. <laughs> I did not think I'd end up with it. As the, as the I... majestic unicorn spears a penguin through the valley. <laughs> 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 that is a beautiful it's, picture of my it's head. The, it's the December of the penguin. That's great. So, um, I, I forgot. You have a dual attack. Which is kind of, because you're a horse, so you can kick and um, skewer things at the same time. Oh. So if you want, you can make your um, you can like oh, see I'm... if you can kick one of these um, oh. penguins into. Oh, oh yeah, I'm in I'm in penguin termination mode. So yeah, I'll <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's ho let's horse kick this little. Uh, I'm, I, am I rolling a d20 for this again? Yes, it's a d20. Okay. Ooh, that's a natural twenty. Oh, okay. So you kick the penguin so hard that it explodes. Its uh, final bomb explodes, oh, okay. and it kills both the plane. It destroys the plane, and there's now like feathers and stuff floating around the air. And maybe you got a little bit of um, beak on your um, your snout, but it'll be okay. Okay, and it's in that moment where you finally hear the hook for thunderstruck. It just yes. comes right in at that point. <laughs> Thunderstruck! Yeah, that's the point. And you see him in uh, like a rainbow behind him, and everything goes to slow motion for five seconds. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Get your fan art ready, folks. <laughs> that's I, your moment. I, I just had this picture of Snowball kicking a, a penguin with another one on his head, like with rainbows coming out of his rear end. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much what that, it is. That's, that's Me too. Yeah, it really is. There's like light behind it. It looks like a scene from like Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, it's got that kind of like metal, uh, heavy metal cover going on. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm that's awesome. right now. All right, everybody, uh, get to drawing. <laughs> <laughs> so you have successfully killed two thing, three things in one go. Nice. Um, congratulations. Success. Uh, there's nothing like a national twenty. Yes. Tell you. Well, you know, those fencing classes really came in handy, now didn't they? So now it's the um the enemy's turn, and so there's really not much left alive. The final penguin he dives down toward um Aurora, and because he's a secretly a black belt um he's going in for um an attack on uh, a melee a melee attack on aurora so if you'd roll a d20 oh i got a five so he um karate chops your bad arm and you take another two-fifths of the wound um and the planes they they are all reeling from the destruction of their th um buddy because you managed to hit the one in the middle of the formation so they're all like spinning off and trying to regain their um their um, composure, so they don't get to make an action this round. <laughs> so it's it's y'all's turn again. Yeah, I'm gonna go last. I know what I'm doing, but I'm. <laughs> please, Aurora oh. and and uh, Luth, please. All right. So there's a penguin engaged with Aurora currently. Yeah, melee in melee. All right. I would. Uh, I'm above that. I would like to try to dive down and just punch at that penguin. Okay, we can do that. With my little claw hand. All right. You'll get a plus, I think, a plus four bonus? No, it'll be a plus five. A plus five bonus on that attack. Okay, and I'm rolling d20? 
Uh, or... D20. D20. Are, oh, are you just using an unarmed, unarmed strike, or are you using Flurry of Blows? I would like to do Flurry of Blows, but I believe I have to hit first before I can do Okay. That. So, D20. Okay. D20 plus 5. I don't feel bad for these penguins at all. They started this fight, and you're going to have to deal right. with the consequences. That, <clears throat> that's an 18 with the bonus. Okay. So, you hit. Ready to use Flurry of Blows? So how this is going to work is you're going to roll, yeah. if I understand Flare of Blows correctly, because I'm not, um, yeah. So I want you to roll 2d6s okay. and tell me the total. All right. And um, you still get your bonus to this. Oh, I still get the plus 5 bonus. Okay. Yeah. So I rolled an 8 plus 5, that'd be 13. Yeah, Aurora is now covered in penguin blood and guts oh. and cranial matter. I just come down, I, I kind of salute as i keep going down because now i'm sort of like a little dime falling down you know so um yeah it's it's very much dead and um had its skull crushed in because you know penguins don't really have that great bone structure um this is the worst documentary ever i'm never <laughs> i'm never coming back to animal planet i'm sorry yeah, <laughs> yeah it doesn't ever happen that way on tv it, does it really doesn't no i think i know why now too <laughs> Butterfly, what would you like to do? Trying to figure out what I have here. Okay. Take your time. We're in no rush. I, it gives me an opportunity to rant. So, do you guys know all those Game Master's manuals that, you know, like things like um, uh, Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder and systems like that published that they're supposed to tell you about how to play the game and how to run the game? They, they're so full of lies and half truths. It's not even funny. One of the biggest things they say is that you are the Game Master, you have all the power. And as this scene is proving, that's a complete and total lie. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they uh, they really shouldn't uh, say that. No. It does also uh, depend on how you want to play. Because I've I've known some GMs that I have not played with myself, but I've I've known some GMs that are like, "Nope, you're gonna do it my way, or you will face the consequences to your action." Yeah. But people don't usually like playing with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And another lie, there, another very popular lie is that the players are going to be nice and friendly, and um, they're not going to build broken characters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's not true. <laughs> For posterity's sake, I'm saying it. That's a complete lie. You heard it here first, folks. Just in, just in case, like when James and uh, you know becomes like huge in the industry, that there was this time where he told you these outright lies about players and GMs, yeah. and we yeah. have it. All on record. You yeah. can't do anything about it. But all her the penguins are gone. Um, all the penguins are currently little droplets of blood and flesh. Um, yes. Yes, the penguins. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, uh, did I not make it clear enough? Uh, <laughs> they're just sure the plane was one of the planes. Was still oh, the planes are still here. There are three planes um, circling and trying to get their bearings again. The grenadiers are all dead. Can I just like, start talking to Luke about what we're going to do with the planes? This is a great question. What are you guys going to do about these planes since they don't have to get very close to you to attack you? Well, they're way up there. I suppose if you come close, I could grab onto a wing and mash at a window. What about you? Well, it seems like the parachutes are bulletproof. So what if there's some way that we can halfway open them so it's That is a good idea. Aha. So do you guys want to try and do that? Yeah. All right. So if each of you would roll a d20. Well, just... I did roll really well on the last one, so I guess I can take this. Uh, seven. Uh, that's not too bad. Yeah. What does the book say? I can never remember how my sliding scale actually works. It's, well, it's kind of a bad thing. I would hope if anyone could, it was you. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I probably should be 16. There's the draft of the latest version. DC, did you get anything? <laughs> no, I rolled a 1 again. Oh. Oh. oh this is gonna be bad. So, Aurora, you managed to get your parachute half open, so you're, um, protected, but it's not slowing your fall any. Um, it's not how it's meant to be used, but that should be fine. Snowball, you got, you accidentally opened your parachute all the way, so you're floating, but you're also protected. Luth, you tear your parachute off. 
All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's just how Luth does it, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, this is a definite case of going right back in that shell, <laughs> the remainder of the descent, and staying there. Someone may want to grab him, yeah, that's just saying. Can yeah. I go over to Luth and grab him? Yeah, I'll let you make another action to see if you can save his hide. Um, go ahead and make a, another d20 check. 19. Okay, Ooh. you are able to fly over and grab him and wrap him up in your arms so he's not going to, when you finally open your parachute all the way, he's not going to, <laughs> um, you know, splat. Um, so you're just holding this giant turtle shell. <laughs> <laughs> There's your next you image. He has a shield. Oh, so, uh... <laughs> it's like Super Mario Brothers all over again. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> And the fan art just keeps coming. <laughs> that's a perfect. That's, that's really great. Oh man! Uh, all right, Nathan. Oh. I believe it's your turn. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, I have I have my parachute open, uh, so that's at least something going on. Um, I'm realizing that uh, one of my boons I have is light, and I'm wondering if I might be able to just try to blind the uh, the pilots in the uh, the planes. Mm-hmm. Just that using be... using my glowing personality, but also hopefully an actual light. Okay, so you're gonna basically like shoot a ray of light out of your horn. I'm shooting a ray of light from my ho- yes. We're gonna say my horn is where I'm shooting a ray of light out of. Yes. Oh boy. It's okay. PG thirteen Deadpool two. <laughs> it's coming out of the horn. Uh, yes, yes, no, it is supposed to come out of the horns. <laughs> so we have, we have a unicorn shooting light out of its whole face. Yes. We have a unicorn, and he's also shooting light out of his butt. Sure. Fantastic. That's right. Um, the rainbow comes out the back end, but the, the, the pure light comes out from the horn. Because so like you're prismatic. like a prism. Yes, exactly. I'm a prism. <laughs> I take light in from the one side, and I have the rainbow come out the end. It's perfect. This is, <laughs> this is how they taught me about light refraction in school. It's just, imagine a unicorn. You put the unicorn here, lights in his like <laughs> That's how you learn. Man, I'm never going back to Hogwarts. Okay, so what am I rolling for this? <laughs> so you'll roll a d20. Oh, okay. While, while you're rolling that, um, I have a question about Open Legend. Yes. So do they not allow healing magic in combat? Uh, they they do. Just curious, because I did notice that um, your um, unicorn didn't have healing magic. Uh, uh, open Legend allows different ways of healing if you can explain it with the ability. Okay. Uh, if, if he has a proper ability, I don't know his character. Uh, but if he can explain it away with one of his abilities, he can have access to the heal boon if it reflects the... Of course yeah, I didn't makes... take that boon, but <laughs> if I had only <laughs> thought of this ahead of time... Yeah, yeah, no, with, with Open Legend, you could, you could, any kind of character, I suppose, could have a, a healing boon if it made sense. Um, I don't know if you have protection defense. Oh, I have, I have a few things. Um, yeah, you have defensive reflexes, protection, mm, um, fortitude in your tank. Fleet of foot, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fast. Of course, this time it's not going to go great, because I rolled a three. Oh, that's so, not good. No. This and is not how the prisms plane work. rolled much higher than that. So you you, you kind of turn into a disco ball and like <laughs> <Perfect. laughs> you everywhere. Perfect. You know what? That's even better. <laughs> I'm actually happy with that. I am... not it actually hits anybody, but you, yeah. know, you turn into a disco ball. <laughs> and you know what? All of a sudden, Thunderstruck stops playing and Stay in the Live starts. <laughs> yes. Yes. Win win. Oh, all right. It's the planes turn to attack. I believe we have three rounds remaining before we hit the ground, or is it? I, it was this the? I think so. I think. I think, I think so. Oh, I, we, I was enjoying myself so much that I totally forgot to keep track. We forgot how this whole thing works. So okay. So two planes are attacking Declare and Aurora together. So how this is going to work? is I want you guys to both roll a d6 and tell me what you got. Because it's kind of like a combined defense action. Four. Six. Okay, so they critically failed. So if you guys would like, you can make your uh, retaliation action against them. Oh, if they're firing at us? Could... Yeah, they came in too close. 
So how this works is they came in, they're firing at you, but they came in way too close and they didn't realize it and they're trying to pull out as fast as they can, but it's not going to be soon enough. Ooh. But they are firing. If you want, you could pop out and use your um, missile thing. Uh, well, I was thinking it'd be neat if, but this is up to Aurora, if uh, he positioned me right, the bullet could bounce off my shell and go to the plane. Ooh. Now it really if is Aurora Super wants Mario. to do that, though, because I'm in Aurora's hands at this point. <laughs> <laughs> or you can throw me at them. <laughs> I think that might be a bad idea since the ground is approaching quite rapidly. Someone might die at that point. Uh, definitely a penguin will die if you hit them. But it, but I, I don't want to, you know, whatever you want to do. I, I... I'll move you so you can deflect the bullet, hopefully. Okay, so if you'd roll a d20, Aurora. Ooh. Oh. This is going to get long and complicated. <clears throat> the plane that you deflect the bullet at dodges out of the way, and the penguin leans out the window, and he tosses a stick of dynamite in your direction. Because he, he got a natural 22. So he did really badly and then really good. So if you guys would both roll a d20 and tell me what you got. 17. 20. <laughs> could, could someone stop getting crits? No. Please? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> the, um... Dynamite completely misses, and Butterfly, you have an, uh, another opportunity for a retaliation attack. I have the acid attack. Can I, like, aim it to their engines or something? Yes, you can, if you'd roll a d20, please. And I think you get a bonus on that of three, if I'm correct. No, wait, is it three or five? It's five. You get a plus five bonus to that. Sweet. 17. Okay, so it's dead. It, it it explodes. Yeah, that um, eventually worked. Yeah, eventually, <laughs> it explodes and dies very dramatically. It, you know, that thing where cool people don't look at explosions. You're definitely not looking at this explosion. We're we're walking away in slow motion, but we're actually following in slow motion, and the explosions behind us. Yeah, yeah. Well, dramatic music plays. Yeah. Oh yes. And All a right. unicorn is a disco ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh also just in other news <laughs> all right i can see you need a disco ball disco and explosions yeah. is like bread and butter though it's like D disco explosions oh yeah it's a, a great amazing. band name man missed opportunity so now we've got an attack coming in at nathan oh great from the other plane as that'll be a d20 not a d6 see this is why disco died that's a four. That's a fourteen. You managed to dodge just in time. That's right. And I did the I did the John Travolta move in order to dodge out of the way. I did oh. the Saturday Night Live. Uh, yeah, Saturday Night Fever. F finger in the air, or hoof in the air, like that. And and that's how I dodge out of the way. Just for <laughs> just for flavor text for you. <laughs> that's amazing. All right. So you have two rounds remaining before you hit the ground, if I'm correct. And if I'm not, I'm sorry for all those people listening. I'm really terrible at this. So I believe it's y'all's turn to act. So if you guys want to try and take out these last two planes, I'm certainly not going to stop you. There's a lot of penguin in the air right now. Are you dreaming of a white Christmas? Because I certainly am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. I'm going to go last, so what, whatever people want to do. DC, what are you thinking here? Just curl up in your shell still and pray you don't get hit? Or do you have something more dramatic in mind? Yeah. Well, there's not really a plane near me. I don't really have anything I can throw. So I can only really do something if it comes close or unless right. I'm thrown. Or I'm kind of in the hands of Aurora, too. So yeah, whatever she a... decides, it, it's my fate. So That doesn't help. <laughs> what about you? On purpose, if that makes you feel better. <laughs> on purpose. That makes me feel real good about all this. <laughs> Luckily, if... You're close enough to the ground that it might not kill him, but he's already taken a wound and a half of damage, so it might kill him. Let's just not tempt fate here. Um, Killing him and dying are the last things on priorities. Right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for now, I will stay in shell, and if I can help be a shield, I will do that. Okay. What about you, butterfly? Have the acid. Um. Yeah, it would be your last use of it, but it's worth a shot. You can also, you guys can also attempt to get close to the planes if you'd like, and uh, sort of like move over to them. But it would be difficult because they're really more agile than you guys. Do I have acrobatics? You do have acrobatics. You have a plus four in acrobatics. You can do amazing somersaults in midair. Do you want to try and use acrobatics to get close to this plane? Sure. All right, let's do it. 
And then, if you get close to the plane, both you and DC can make an attack against it, which will be awesome. So, may, um, if you roll a d20 here. 20. Oh, <laughs> goodness. You don't just get close to the plane. You land on the plane. And you guys are now both on a plane that's moving at high speeds and is now trying to frantically shake you off. You guys will both get an attack, and you get a plus two bonus to it. That will be on top of, I believe, a plus three bonus to Book Butterfly and a, I think, plus five is actually correct. Yeah, it was plus five last time. Okay. So that situation could change. All right. D20? Um, yes, please. Well, I certainly don't help the situation with another one. I got a 12. Is that with or without the bonus? That's without the bonus. Okay, so you'd get a 15 total. I use make attack here? I'm not sure. Yeah, you can. You bet you can. Oh, golly, that gives you a plus... Ooh! That gives you a plus 16, doesn't it? Oh, my gosh. Yep. <laughs> well. So, it's dead. <laughs> you, you stick your blade in through the window and spear the penguin that's driving it through the head. <sighs> the Top Gun remake is going real good. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> But while you do it, you accidentally let go of Declare, who's now falling out of the sky again. DC. D DC. DC. Oh, it's D. And then C. How do you pronounce the full name? Uh, Lasser is the last bit. D L DC Lasser. Okay, got it. I saw Claire the first time I said it. So DC is now hurtling through the air at top speed um, and is getting ready to die. Uh, I do have a slow fall, which can reduce my falling damage. Okay, well, now you tell me. <laughs> That's right, Monk. Right. Monks can do that. Do you want me to come try to grab you again? Or... No, that he'll went... be fine at this point. He has enough time. He'll fall slowly to the ground and gently. Like you're... He didn't even need the parachute to begin with. Oh, yeah. Because he doesn't take falling damage. He could have activated that within um, close, um, close proximity of the um, uh, submarine and taken no damage whatsoever. He's like Mary Poppins, but a turtle. <laughs> 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 are, are we um, to a point where we uh, we had hit the ground now or um well or i, I would do, hit the ground or? i do believe p um my um ps friend um nathan has another action as well does does <laughs> um is there anything left to even hit there's one plane left Oh, there's one plane left. Well, we have to do something about that. Yeah, Snowball, Snowball's uh, ready to go uh, a jousting. And okay. uh, he's, he's going to try to just uh, spear that sucker right through with his horn. With your plus nine bonus. Oh, yeah, baby. I have to roll extra hard for this one. It's like uh, I'm, I'm actually doing the disco dance when I'm rolling. Just so that it's okay. extra special. Okay, well, that's an eight. Thanks, you thanks. Miss. <laughs> you miss. Not even a mince words. You, you go flying, charging. <laughs> but you know what? I looked stylish doing it. In yeah, you head. did. Yes. With your, little, with your little disco ball on top of your oh, horn. Yeah. Rainbow flying out of your butt. Now, now if, if I still have the penguin on my head, is the penguin now a disco ball? <laughs> <laughs> I have to. I have to get the image right. Like, is the speared penguin like? Does is is the the dead eyes of the penguin now lighting up like a disco ball? Like the disco yes. ball comes through. Okay, let's go with that. That's why your um, light attack didn't work. Is because there was um. It was just too fantastic to disco penguin. Oh, oh that's great. So everyone's made their action. The plane gets to try and retaliate. It's going to attack. Nathan, because he's the closest dude. You can see me pretty easy, so there's... <laughs> yeah. Um, a d20? Uh, d20, okay. Lots of d20s. Sorry, guys. It's okay. I rolled a 12. You very much dodged the attack. Nice. Um, Excellent. So you, have, you guys have one turn before you hit the ground. Um, DC is no longer in um, danger of dying, um, and it's your turn to act. Right. I will point out, though, that you're one turn away from the ground, so you, if your no, parachutes are not activated, slash not on your body, you might want to think about fixing that right now. Wink. So I'm going to continue my descent, if I can, Yep. slowly, and just uh, prepare for landing, because <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, so. Okay. Um, Butterfly, how do you feel? What are you up to? 
Um, I fully open my parachute, and it looks like I've done this before. Okay, why don't you roll a d20? Get them to take advantage of you saying it looks like you've done it before, and make you roll a d20, because I can. Because I'm a mean team. Well, as far as penguins are concerned, yeah. Man, I missed on a perfect opportunity um, on this game. I could have used an invention of my brother's that would have made you all die laughing. Usually I try not to die laughing. That's a, that's a shame. You might have done it. Um, I'm kind of curious. <laughs> the Illuminati. Ah, uh, yes. The Illuminati. It's a secret society of llamas? that controls the world, but it's made up entirely of llamas. That is a scary organization indeed. I don't want to get yes. on their bad side. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll give you a plus three on the check. I got an 18. With the bonus? No, without. You open the parachute with style. It totally looks like you know what you're doing. Um, all right, and I believe now it's Nathan's turn. Your parachute is already deployed, I believe. Yep, my parachute is already deployed, so uh, I'm totally good there. Well, I'm going to need brace for a landing, but uh, I want to uh, look back toward that mean, mean plane, and uh, I am going to try to shoot a ray of light at it again. To okay. Try and blind this mean... Roll a I, I, I will gladly do that. And that is an 11. While the penguin on your horn gets blasted off with the power of Christmas spirit, Perfect. you miss. Oh. <laughs> well. Um, <laughs> the disco god is out of the way <laughs> just in time. Um, is because the water's coming up so fast, it has to pull up and it can't attack you anymore. Okay. But you all land on the top of the summer style safely. I, I imagine when I hit, it's like a uh, when you spin a coin and it's winding down the spin because I'm in my shell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got you got kind of like that Koopa Troopa thing going on. Yeah. You kind of <laughs> wind it back and forth a little bit. Will the agents of Inside save Santa from nefarious ne'er-do-wells? Will Luth ever stop spinning? Will Aurora dissolve anything else with acid? Will Snowball learn how prisms actually work? Will there be a documentary on Penguin Disco? Will James learn the correct pronunciation of Submersible? All these questions and more shall be answered as we continue Operation Santa Drop on the next episode. Just as soon as I find the time to edit it together. Busy season and all that. Until then, make sure to join us over at Delvecast.com for more adventures, and thank you to our sponsors for this episode, i.e. our shiny level patrons, Dominic Perry and Bonnie Ainsworth. And to stay apprised of all our goings-on, follow us on Facebook or on Twitter at Delve Podcast. If I do not see you before, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Here's hoping our intrepid heroes saved Santa in time. Oh, also, BBC, I'm available for future Penguin documentary voiceovers. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Why did we write that in the notes? Leave it in, leave it in. <laughs>